You know, um, we've been talking from the position of God resetting the church. And as I was studying this week, I really began to just ask God, um, why am I teaching the way I'm teaching? And the answer was simple. God has reset the church. And so with that in mind, let's just go, let's just recap some things. Uh, number one, we saw, all right, we saw that Passover was, you know, uh, first. Then they went to the tabernacle. Then they went to the temple. Then Jesus comes. And now we're at the place where Jesus lives, dies, and God raises him from the dead. Somebody say glory to God. Come on, say it loud. Glory to God. And so today, I want to, I'm not going to talk long because we have, uh, we're going to do communion today. And the topic that I want to share with you, it's about the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost is real. And I want to start this out by saying this. Um, if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, you and I need the Holy Ghost. Jesus, the Christ, needed the Holy Ghost. So there are churches that I believe are demonically inspired to negate the activity of the Holy Ghost in the current day believer. When I was born as a human being, nobody ever came back and told me I don't need to be a human being anymore. When you got born again, you got born again by the Spirit of God. Nobody should come back and tell you that you don't need the Spirit of God anymore now that you're born again. Now all you need is scriptures. No, we're born again by the Spirit of God. And so today, I, I really want you to uh, just, just lock in with me. If I don't take you to a lot of scriptures, but just quote a lot, because I have a lot I want to really say and I want to get it done without just showing too many of the scriptures. Um, but let me, let me preface it by saying this. Just like, just like Jesus or the Christ, the Messiah was prophesied, and the people were prepared. They were waiting for him because the the Messiah was prophesied, but it was hidden, it was hidden that the Holy Ghost was prophesied. It was hidden. They knew Messiah would come. And let, you know what? Let me just let's, let's let's read that. Go to John chapter 4. And, and, and I'm pretty, you know, you guys are familiar with this. John chapter 4, this is the woman at the well with Jesus. And I want you to hear this. I don't know what you're doing. You know, focus. Because I've been praying and asking God for you to receive the Holy Ghost. I notice there's a lot of believers that don't pray in tongues on their own. They wait for a church service in order to feel the Spirit of God. That means that their anointing, their anointing is limited. You don't want to be limited in this hour. We're going to look at it that the Holy Ghost falls on people. The Holy Ghost falls on people. And right now, you're in a house or a home where the Holy Ghost can fall. But you have to be prepared for him to fall. See, some of you are just too relaxed right now. You're sitting there, your legs crossed, probably got a coffee in your hand. No, no. The Bible says this. When God met the children of Israel, he told them, sanctify yourself. In other words, prepare yourselves to meet the Lord. I believe even now uh, believers are getting lazy as they're, they're doing church from home. They're streaming. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're watching church from home like it's a show. 
I believe that. I believe that the, the, the enemy is he's, he's crafty. He knows how to get into our flesh. This is the word of God. We're e we are in the house of God, and we need to focus if we want to get filled. And I know many believers are stressed out. But that doesn't, that doesn't exclude you from attacks. That's because you're stressed out. You're still going to get attacked. So the only anti-stress is the Holy Ghost. Like I said earlier, I was born human. Nobody ever told me once I was born human that I don't need to be human. Once I got born again, no one should tell me I don't need the Holy Ghost. I got born by the Spirit, and I need to live by the Spirit. Jesus himself said without, he said, without me, ye could do nothing. How is Jesus going to run my life if it's not by the Holy Ghost? I don't see Jesus right here. Jesus is not right there. He's not. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So what was he talking about? By his spirit, the spirit of God. So when they, when they say that the gifts and the power of God are not for today, you're not for today. You need to go somewhere else. You need to go and ask God if the Holy Ghost is not for today. I bet you they don't ask God. I bet you they just, you just come up with their doctrines. I want to see them fast and pray and ask God if the Holy Ghost is not for today. And you know what would happen? They wouldn't get an answer because God would prove to them, if you don't want me, I'm not going to speak to you. So look at yourself. Look at your situation and say to yourself, I need the Holy Ghost. And like I said earlier, we got to be in a position to receive him. Um, back in the day, they used to have tarrying services. But you know what? You can tarry anywhere. Tarry just means wait. They were in one place, in one accord, praying, waiting, and the Holy Ghost fell. Somebody say loud, I don't care if you live in an apartment, under an apartment, yell out, the Holy Ghost fell. See, too often we want hands laid on us. Too often we want grease on the forehead. Too often we want the choir to sing and, and make us feel special. The Holy Ghost falls. Now go to John chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 20. This is Jesus talking to the, the woman at the well. And it's very significant and very, very, very important to us that we understand what he's saying. So the woman at the well says this. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto a woman... Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now, uh, being honest with you, I, it's like some of you are already saved, but I, I believe this message is going to apply to you because I, I sense in my spirit that a lot of people have not taken advantage of this consecrated time. I think people are relaxing. No one is, is, is engaging God. Uh, the multitude are, are, are possibly still afraid. Now they got a new fear of going back to work too soon. So the devil is going to give you new fear. We prayed for months to God, for God to bring a healing, and now you're afraid that God didn't answer. The devil's crafty. He's a liar. He's slick. He's, you know, but, you know. So I didn't tell you what to do, but I'm just letting you know where your fear is coming from next. So here we go. So now we got to get to a place where you're in your home and you have time to consecrate so that you can get filled with the Holy Ghost. But many of you are not. 
Many of you are watching movies, reading newspapers, watching the news. You're doing everything that you did before this time. It's not my phrase, but somebody said, if you're doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome, then you cuckoo. They use a different word, but you cuckoo. So you can't expect to get full of God when you give him 20 minutes and you give everything else 20 hours. So Jesus is talking to this woman and he says in verse 23, John 4, but the hour cometh and now is. Somebody say now is. When the true worshipers the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now, I'm just going to use Jesus' words here. So you could be a false worshiper. How can I falsely worship God? Worship him with your understanding. Worship him with your flesh. Worship him in your natural state. That's a false worshiper. Jesus the Christ says, the Father is seeking true worshipers that know where God is. God's in the Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how are you going to find him? Forgive me for this crude analogy, but I will never date a dog. I will never go out with an alligator. I am not going to date somebody's pet iguana. So, and you, and you, and, and God created a venue for us to worship him in, but we still want to, we want to, we want to bring him our flesh. And Jesus said, the Father is seeking those true worshipers that know how to go in the spirit and in truth. And Jesus said like this, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. See, this is Jesus talking. So, You've been lied to if you don't have the Holy Ghost. And your church misrepresents the Holy Ghost if you think he come out, kick about, cheek about, cheek about, taka, taka, paka, taka. It's the Holy Ghost. That's cheek about, cheek about, haka, about, taka, about. The Holy Ghost gives you the fruit of God, the manifestation of God in your activity, and the power of God in your ability. It's not just tongues, but I'll tell you like this. When you're really filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll pray in tongues, according to Jude, to build up your most holy faith. You won't just be praying in tongues when you go to church. Well, let's just go here. Verse 24, God is a spirit. Somebody say, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must not an option. You must worship God in the spirit. I know sometimes I've gone to church, I've seen it in my own church doing praise and worship, people just staring at the choir. They're looking right at the choir like this, like as if they're at Broadway, waiting for something to make them clap. That's false worshipers. You're there for the music. I see it in, in big churches, small churches. I see it everywhere. People will sit there waiting to be touched before they respond to God. You see, they need a touch from the outside. But if they were true worshipers, they would feel him on the inside and their hands would automatically go up. Somebody say them days have to return where the people are true worshipers. But I think the problem is People preach on this, but they don't, they don't give the people a foundation. The foundation is you have to have the Holy Ghost. 
You can't tell somebody to worship in the spirit if they don't have a spirit to worship in. And here we go. Getting to my message. Ready? Verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And that's where I want us to start looking at this woman that she wasn't even a Jew, but she knew Messiah was coming and that Messiah would tell her everything. Come on, help me. The Holy Ghost in your life gives you answers. Come on. Jesus even said, once he's gone, he said, don't even meditate what you have to say because the Father's going to give you what to say in that hour and how is he going to do it? By the Holy Ghost. But the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And I don't go there because uh, what we're going to look at today is the fact that the Holy Ghost was promised. Just like people were expecting Messiah, here is this woman. She knew Messiah was coming. And she's a Samaritan, I believe. She wasn't even a Jewish woman. But they knew how many believers are in the body of Christ that don't have the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul, he met some disciples, and, you know, I, everything, I, you know, I, I can hear a lot going on in the Spirit, so y'all need to just be a little quiet. Amen. What happens is this. The Apostle Paul, going on his journey, and found some disciples, and he asked these disciples, now this is, this is Bible day, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. He said, then how was you baptized? And they said, we're baptized in John's baptism unto repentance. He said, John baptized unto repentance, but Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. Come on. So if they didn't know that the Holy Ghost was available, how many out there don't know he's available? Some of you are possibly watching this and enjoying this. This is not a show. I am trying to tell you, you need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God so much in our lives that we, we're, we're, we're empowered to think right, love right, and do right. Well, let me, let me get back to my message. So they knew Messiah was coming. Here's the key. Messiah is Christ. The anointed one. They knew the anointed one was coming. Let me give you the end of the message in the beginning. But they never knew that they would receive the anointing of the anointed one. But in Ezekiel eleven nineteen, I'm going to read it. This is God telling them back in Ezekiel that I'm going to give you a heart, a spirit. And we know that are born again, we're born again by the Spirit of God. We know that God has, has ripped out our stony, sinful heart and put a, a, his Spirit into us, giving us a brand new heart. So Ezekiel prophesies in Ezekiel eleven nineteen, and he says, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of your, their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statues and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. So God prophesied, I'm going to give you a new spirit. Now, in Jeremiah 31, 31, we, we get to see it clear how he does it. He gives them a new spirit by giving them a new agreement, by giving them a new covenant. 
So go real quick. I'll give you a minute to get there. Jeremiah 31, 31. We'll start there. And he says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband in a, a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. And write it in their heart and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more two things that both Jeremiah and Ezekiel said, I'm going to put my word in them and they're going to be my people. James said it like this, receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your souls. So when, 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 when they were, pro when they were prophesying when the day was coming, when God himself, would dwell inside of the hearts of his people. Now, I, I'll tell you like this. Um, if you have ever adopted a child, that child might not have come from you, but you put your heart in that child because you love that child. And if that child receives your heart and they love you back, that child in you would never think there was an adoption. I believe there are believers out there that believe they're adopted. The Bible says we received the adoption. There was an adoptive process, but I am not, not his child. I am his legitimate birth child. They use the terminology of adoption, but I'm really his. He killed the old me and made me brand new. I am his child. I have no adoption papers. The, the, the me that belonged to the devil is dead. No, no, no. That, there is no adoption papers in hell. No, 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 no. Jesus killed the old me. And I am now born again, a brand new creation. No trace of adoption. God loved me, made me, uh, made me brand new. See, we use terminologies. The Bible uses terminologies to get us to understand. But once you get the understanding, once you get the Holy Ghost, you recognize I'm fully his. Now, nobody's going to come. I'm not going to go look for my birth parents. Come on. That, that, you know, that will make you think, you know what? You used to be my child. And um, no, 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 no. I was never the devil's child. The old me was the devil's child, and God killed him. I'm a brand new me. I was born again God's child, never the devil's child. Rich McDonald was born the devil's child, and he's dead, hallelujah, nailed to Jesus' cross. Now I'm alive, brand new. 